Hi everyone, I am Vinicius Pacheco and I'm a master's degree student at UFMG in Brazil. So in this video I'm going to talk a bit about the metaprogramming in Elixir. That's the ability of the language to extend itself. So Elixir is a general purpose functional programming language. It's open source and you can check the code in the link below. It is built on top of Erlang, adding very interesting features to the language. And because of this ability of extending itself, most of the Elixir language is written in Elixir. Only a small part of the language is written in Erlang. Let's see how this metaprogramming works in practice. We will use what we call macros. A macro is an Elixir code that runs at compile time. Macros work like functions that will receive pieces of code and return a piece of code. For example, Elixir does not have a while loop like many languages have. But using a macro called while, we could receive these two pieces of code and transform this whole while into this new code, which would emulate the behavior of the traditional while loop by using constructs that already exist in Elixir. This code starts with the for loop iterating forever, but it'll only do something and keep iterating if the expression is true, otherwise it breaks. And as I said, most of the Elixir is written in Elixir, and it's with the help of these macros. Common constructs like the way we create a module, the way we create a function, or even the if constructs are all macros, so you can see that we can really build useful things with it. Creating a macro is rather simple. Uh, we use the construct def macro, followed by the name of the macro. In this case, I'm naming it nothing. <laughs> uh, we receive the code as a parameter, and then we can return a new code. This macro here is returning the exact same code that it's receiving, so it's doing nothing special. And we, if you were to apply it inside a function, we would just return the same code that's inside it. And, and the natural question that arises here is, uh, what is the, the structure of this variable code that I'm receiving here? Is this a string? And how can I manipulate it? Uh, so what a macro receives is actually called an abstract syntax tree, or AST for short. The way that we represent code in Elixir through an AST is very simple. Every expression breaks down to three element tuple. The expression 1 plus 2, for example, would be represented as this in the AST. Uh, in the AST, the first element is an atom, representing the operation of the expression. The second is a list that contains some metadata, such as the line number. And the third element is the list of arguments. And that's the structure of the AST. This three element tuple can be used as a parameter to another one. For instance, to sum something with 3, we know that the structure would be something like this. Here, we're trying to sum 1 plus 2 with 3. We already know how to represent 1 plus 2. So, the first parameter here is exactly the AST of this expression. And that's how the code is glued together in the AST. A more complex code uh, would have many layers in its parameters. And there are the details about the AST that I didn't mention, but you can check them uh, in the official documentation in the link below. One AST that I like to highlight here is the do block. It is just a keyword list with the keyword do and its value is the AST inside the block. This makes it really easy to pattern match when building a macro. Uh, it allows us to, to use the macro this way now, with the traditional do end block. So going back to the macro, uh, now that we know uh, that this block is actually an AST, uh, and we know how the, the AST works, we can create our own code to return here. For instance, let's suppose just for now that regardless of the code that I receive, I just want to replace it with this sum uh, that we already know the SC, uh, how it looks like. The macro would be like this. And if you were to use it inside a function, regardless of the, how complex the code might be inside of the macro, it would just replace it by this simple sum. But writing code like this directly in the ST version isn't very practical. Fortunately, Elixir provides us with a way to, to get the AST automatically from a code that we want. So instead of writing the AST directly, we could just do this. Everything inside a quote is going to be translated to the AST version. So this code is equivalent to this one uh, that we have been writing so far. And, and now things are much simpler because the code that we write here inside the quote block is the code that's going to be replaced where the macro is used. But something is still missing, right? Uh, how can I use the, the block that I receive here as a parameter? Now, what can I do with it? Well, uh, we can use unquote. So, 
uh, this unquote here, it will take an AST and inject it together with our code. We can look at the quote and the quote as a string interpolation for code. When I'm writing a code, uh, uh, but I want to inject some external code in it, I need to use unquote. And this is how I can inject code inside a block. For instance, uh, instead of summing two numbers here, I could just add a message. Uh, and now if I want to use this, uh, I want to use this macro in, in the function here, for instance. The code inside the macro should be preserved, but a message is now injected. So let's get back to the first example of the while loop. To create a macro that supports it, we can see that it receives two pieces of code. The first is an expression, and the other is a do block. So our macro definition would be something like this. I'll start with the code block here, so I can type some code. And let's add our code that emulates a while loop using native constructs. Here I use the expression that the user typed as the first argument in the loop, and it will determine if the loop will continue or not, just like a, a usual while. So uh, the while loop will only continue if the expression evaluates the true, and in this case we want to execute the block of the code that the user typed. So I can just unquote the block. On the other hand, if it evaluates to false, I want to break the loop. We have no native way of doing it, but a solution that works is to throw some error here and catch it right away. And it would stop the loop uh, and it's transparent to the user. Uh, and now we can use the while loop as we are used to. So with just a few lines of code, we were able to add new constructs to Elixir, a while loop, using just Elixir itself. And another great example of the use of macros is to create a domain-specific language. See this code for instance. We're using macros to represent HTML code in Elixir. And with this representation, we could write a more complex HTML generator, like this. Uh, that'll change the, what's the final code depending on if the user is logged or not. And there are a lot more to be explored here. With macros, we can modify the function where the macro is used, we can modify other functions, or even the whole module, if you will. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about macros, the official site of Elixir provides a more detailed tutorial. You can access it in this link here. So that's it for this video. Uh, those are the references that I used to produce it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please get in touch. Bye.